Hey guys, today I'm back out here on the pasture fencing project. I'm trying to get this done before the end of the year. That's one of my goals this year. So um, getting ready to fence in this area right here. I don't know if you can tell, but there is a dip. It goes down in here where there's a culvert and then it uh, goes up to the other side. So what we're gonna be doing is we are going to basically be fencing in this, this dip or this low spot in the field. And I've got most of my wooden posts in. Uh, they're spaced about every 24 feet, my line posts, my wooden line posts. And um, what I have next to put in is what we're gonna call a boss post. It's gonna be the boss. It's basically gonna tell the fence or show the fence what to do. And it's gonna hold the fence down in that low part. And uh, so that's the only two fence posts I got left to put in. And then I should be ready to start stretching this fence. So let's go ahead and start getting these posts in the ground. And I'll show you what I'm doing uh, basically to help these posts stay in the ground and not pull out with the force of the fence, you know, pulling up on it. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So I have been running a string uh, when I'm doing all my posts here, making sure everything's straight this time, trying to make everything better. And um, I've had a lot of people comment that I need to mark the post hole digger so that I dig the hole deep enough. But uh, when you see me using these post hole diggers, these hand ones, I'm not typically digging it deeper. I'm actually straightening the hole out because I'm trying to put these holes in the ground with the tractor and it's kind of angled. The tractor's kind of sitting on the side of a hill and it's just kind of really hard to get that tractor to drill a straight up and down hole. So typically what I'm doing here is cutting, uh, making the hole straight up and down, just taking off one of the sides. So to keep this post from pulling up out of the ground, what I'm using is a six inch post. So I'm using a bigger post and then I'm gonna attach a piece of treated wood to the side of the post and make the post bigger at the bottom. That way um, it's gonna be harder to pull up out of the dirt. And uh, that's simply what I'm gonna do. There's several things you can do. You could use a, maybe you could use a tapered post, uh, one that you know is bigger at one end than it is at the other. Um, and you could also set these in concrete. And a lot of times they'll, they'll make the hole bigger at the bottom so that the concrete is more of a bell shape. Uh, and it'll be harder for it to pull out of the ground. So there's a few different ways you can do it. I'm just gonna do this way. It's gonna be the probably the simplest and easiest way to do it. All right. So now I'll try to put this post in the hole. You hear that it's full of water. Every hole along the side is filled one to fill with water. So now what I'm gonna do now is just uh, go ahead and start filling this in with dirt, tamping it down just like I did any other post. Oh man. Oh I stepped I stepped in the wet clay. Oh, oh get off of there like having an extra five pounds on your boots. Well, on this hole right here, this tractor was really sitting in here kind of crooked, hard spot to get into, and that hole was kind of shooting off that direction. So definitely gotta straighten this one out. It's a, this is a bad one. Since the way our hole was drilled, it's bigger in that direction, so that's where we'll put our, uh, our board facing that way, where we got room. And water in this hole. So now that I've got these boss posts put in, you can see the string right here. Um, it's on the bottom of the posts at each end at the braces. And you can see it's at the top of the post here. So we've got about a four and a half foot elevation change uh, here where this culvert is. So we're gonna have to pull down on that fence four and a half feet to attach it to this post. And then these will, this, this post will hold it down. 
but I want to wait a couple days. I want to let this settle in a couple more days before I put that upward pressure on there. So what I'm going to do now in the meantime is I'm going to use this string and I'm going to put in some T posts. So I've got a wooden post every 24 feet. I'm going to put like two T posts in between them and that means I'll have some type of a post about every eight feet to attach the fence to. So let's go ahead and start pounding in some T posts. So these T-posts that I'm using, they're seven foot tall T-posts, and I'm gonna put them in the ground a little bit over two feet. So that means we're gonna be driving these in the ground till about, about here. And uh, they're gonna be really strong, uh, should help hold the fence real well against any pressure that the livestock will put on it. Actually probably drove it just an inch too deep. So now it's one week later after we set our boss posts down in that low area and today we're ready to start stretching our fence. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna start off with our single barbed wire at the bottom. So the reason we do that, that's kind of to prohibit animals from trying to crawl under the fence. And uh, you really can't put an electric wire that low or it would just short, short out on the grass. So that's why we're putting the, uh, the barbed wire on the bottom. It's also kind of a sacrificial wire um, because if anything's gonna rot out against the ground, it's gonna be that barbed wire first. And, and we can replace that without having to replace the whole field fence. And then after that, we're gonna stretch our sheep and goat fence down here to this post and uh, see if we can get it nice and tight. And um, the trick with this is after we stretch our fence, we're gonna have to pull it down in that low area and staple it to the post. And then hopefully the fence will stay there and it won't pull out of the ground. So that's what we're gonna be doing now. So let's go ahead and, and uh, start stretching this fence, see how it works out. Pull that tight, will you? you? Should lift it up. There you go. Okay, like got it. the mud.
that's the, <laughs> that is the end of that come on. I ran out of, come on. So these last two rolls of fence that I bought, um, I couldn't find any at the normal places I go. I ended up buying this at Tractor Supply. And this is Red Brand Sheep and Goat Fence, and it has a different knot. It, I think they call it the square deal knot. And this is way easier to strip out than the, the hinge joint stuff. So you basically just gotta cut this little tie right here in the middle and it frees up your wire. So uh, definitely like stripping this fence out a lot better. Goes a lot quicker. Now these are pieces that you cut off, some of them will stay on the wire and some of them will fall off. So you will have to, you will drop them and you will have to pick them up when you're done. But uh, way faster to strip out. Sometimes they stay on the horizontal wire. The top wires you gotta untwist just like you would on a hinge joint fence. But uh, overall, way faster to strip out than a whole uh, fence that's all hinge joints. So we're tying our fence off, trying to keep it as tight as I can, I guess. I do have a lot shorter space here than last time. Now one thing I did do, I put a staple in here at the top, just loose. It's on here loose, and all that's doing is just making sure that this fence doesn't fall or get, you know, shorter as I, I tie it down. So that's just keeping it in place. I'm not stapling this at all. I want these slip knots to be able to slide and tighten down on the post. So the bottom wire is always the worst wire to try to bend. Of course, it's a thicker gauge. This is a 10 gauge wire here on the top wire and the bottom wire. And uh, you've got the brace wire to go around <clears throat> and uh, just close to the ground. It's just a bear to try to tie off. It's just harder to bend. And sometimes when you're in tight spots like this, Sometimes these little bending tools might be helpful. I don't use this thing very often, but uh, it can come in handy. All right, <clears throat> moment of truth. I'm gonna start taking the tension off. Well, it came off pretty well immediately. Didn't have to release it very much. So I'm assuming. I kept a lot of my tension. We'll see. Do the bottom one. My initial thought so far on this one is that I think we've still got it as tight as we need it. So it looks like we've got to pull this fence down. I don't know, at least two and a half feet. So hopefully, hopefully I can do it. Oh, I may not weigh enough. Okay, get my muddy boot through here. Oh. <laughs> There's my whole weight. It's still staying up. There, my whole weight basically holds it down to about the right height. I think I'm gonna have to have, uh, I have used to have you staple this in. I'm gonna have to have you help me on this. Yeah, you can't quite get it down all the way. You don't weigh quite enough. I'm gonna have to push it down even further. <laughs> this is kind of difficult to do. So Rebecca doesn't weigh enough to hold it down. Just stay on, just hang out there for a little bit. Looks about good. Yeah, go ahead and come off of it. 
There you go. Still gotta pull it down over there too on that post. I don't know, you might be able to just do it with your hands. Well, you got it. Oh, I got, I got my glove. <laughs> Stapled right through my glove. Oh, Sydney, I don't need you, but Okay, hold on. Let's pause for the dog. Sydney, go away. All right. Yeah. Hopefully I don't get my glove. You're a little too low this time. Okay, you're good. So we got our fence complete. We got it all stapled to the wooden posts and it's tied off to all of the T posts. And you can see the fence stretching down through the low area and everything looks pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with the way the whole thing has turned out. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of this. So I don't know if it's gonna show up real well in the video, but as we were tying off this fence, you know, one post it may have needed to go up, another post it may have needed to go down. This ground is not the levelest ground. It is just, it's just kind of, uh, there's no straight lines here. Doesn't seem like it. So um, on the T posts, I feel like they're not the best thing to be able to tie off to. Um, that's why I think these wooden posts, they're at least every 24 feet, sometimes more often, and we're stapled to those, and that's really helping hold the fence the best. But uh, at the T posts, some of these did need to go up and down as well. So what I did is I did use the regular ties where you twist them around. I twisted at least one tie on every one of these T-posts to help hold the fence up or down the way I wanted it to be. And then I just put the spring clips, the spring wire clips on the rest of it to hold the fence there. But uh, most of the holding power, you know, on this fence is gonna be on the wooden posts and especially those boss posts down in the low area. That's where most of the tension's at. So in between these two boss posts down here, um, we do have the culvert that comes through here and water flows through here. So we have a bunch of concrete, rip wrap, that kind of thing in here. And it's not very even. You can see between this bottom barbed wire and the ground, some of these places, there's probably six inches of a gap between, um, between the barbed wire and the ground. So it's very uneven through this area. And what we'll probably try to do is bring some more concrete, more rock, maybe some big two inch rock, something and try to fill this in and try to get rid of that gap because we don't want a gap big enough that our dogs could get through or a coyote could get through. Plus this is like a multi-species fence and we will be allowing our chickens in the barnyard access out here at some point in time. And we don't want a big enough gap that the chicken could get under the fence as well. So uh, we'll try to, come up with something, you know, to help fill in that area and uh, make this more secure. So at this T-post right here, it also has a gap under the barbed wire. What you can't tell is our, our water line actually runs across the road right here. And um, ever since we dug this out, this has kind of been a sunk in area. So below this barbed wire, there's probably six inches of gap under that barbed wire. So what we'll probably do here We'll probably add dirt and we'll try to just build i think from about here to over here we need to build this up and replant some grass and hopefully make that area secure but overall um, i think those are the only two places that really have a gap the rest of this uh, we were able to you know adjust the fence up and down and follow the terrain of the ground 
and keep everything uh, secure enough to keep any animals out or in. So I am pretty happy with the way that this fence turned out. So I did try to put the stretcher bar, I tried to put it closer, but I actually had it so close, we had so much fence to take up that I ran the come along all the way in and it couldn't tighten anymore. But even though, even though I couldn't tighten it anymore, once we let it off, luckily we had so much we needed to push down on this fence that everything stayed nice and tight because we had to pull it down into that low spot. So everything still worked out pretty good and uh, pretty happy with the way that it, um, that it turned out. Now I know a lot of people have different ideas on the way I should stretch this fence and I've tried several different ways and I, I, I like trying different ways, trying to find out which one works the best. So I don't really stick with the way, I like trying different ways and I didn't get it right last time and I wanted to try this one again. Now a lot of people don't, I guess, don't understand why I want to pull off this post, but when I pull off that post, if that brace is going to shift, it's going to take up all the shift in the brace before I tie it off. And I, there's actually a gap under the ground right here. You can see it. It's probably at least a half inch gap at the bottom. So I have no idea how much the fence post actually shifted. I did put a camera up to see if I could tell whether this brace shifted when I tightened up the come alongs. And that's the reason why I did this is to, to go ahead and you know pre-tension the brace or to get the brace, all the slack out of the brace and get it pulled in there tight and any movement out of it. And um, I think I'm pretty happy. You know, that's the reason why I did that. I'm pretty happy with this method. I think the, I, the, the whole thing is, is, is finding the right place to put the stretcher board in there so that you can tighten it properly and tie it off and not have too much slack to take up. So I think there's just a little bit of a learning curve there to, to try to get, you know, um, to try to get that down. So the boss posts are doing exactly what we wanted it to do. It's holding that fence down in that low area. And uh, that was a lot of pressure. That was a lot of force for us to pull that fence down there. And those two posts have the majority of that pressure on those two posts. And it, if you look at them, it doesn't look like they've moved at all. They haven't shifted, they haven't lifted up. And so far that's where it, that looks like it's gonna work out really well. So I've got one more stretch of fence to complete the pasture. And that may be the, the toughest one to do. And that's the one that goes down the backside of our dam and it goes down and then it goes over and connects to the barnyard. So uh, that's a fair, that's gonna be the steepest terrain on our property is gonna be the backside of that dam. And um, there's several ways I could do that. I haven't decided exactly 100% how I'm gonna do that yet, but that's gonna be the next stretch of fence that we do. And then there is a brush pile back here that's right next to where the, where the fence is gonna go. So I really wanna get that brush pile burned up. We'll be doing that here pretty soon burning that brush pile, maybe cutting down a couple more trees. Um, and then we got some gates to hang. So we've got a few gates uh, to hang and then this will all be complete and we can finally get some more livestock. So um, that's what's coming up. I'm still trying to get this done before the end of the year. So I'm gonna be pushing on this pretty hard to try to get it done. So I think that's it for today's video guys. Um, pretty much burnt all day today, just trying to get this one stretch of fence in. So uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Once again, there's something down in my hole. <laughs> well, I can tell what this is. It is some kind of a plastic jug down in that hole, perfectly right in the bottom of that hole so I couldn't dig around it. It's amazing what's buried in this old farm.